Hi, Phil Schoenberg, Fast Pitch Power. Had a great question from one of our followers who was a little bit confused having watched our Back to Basics Reach, Track, Fire, and Drive drill and noticing uh, me talking about something that we talk about often, and that is the drive foot, toe and knee being in what we call a power forward position. If I'm coming off the pitching rubber and I'm going to track, I'm going to load and I'm going to track. Okay, here is what would be considered not even a suboptimal, but a bad position for my drive foot, toe, and knee, which are behind what would be considered a midline. And from here, if I'm going to drive through, which I want to do, or I'm going to explode and glide off the pitching rubber, the full surface of my drive foot, side of my drive foot, is going to be dragging, forcing me to lean and prematurely rotate. Conversely, what we are looking to accomplish coming off that pitching rubber is a position where the drive foot, toe, and knee are forward. So when I drive through, drive foot, toe, to drive foot, heel, it is just the inside of my big toe which creates much less drag and friction on the ground that is going from my drive foot toe to my stride foot heel. Now what he was confused about was the impression or the assumption that if my drive foot toe and knee were in that power forward position, here I am in power K, drive foot toe and knee forward, that it would only be able to be accomplished if there was rotation of my hips to get it there. But as you can see with my just standing here, and again I haven't exploded off the pitching rubber, but if you go back and watch that video, you will see that Emily, one of our advanced pitchers, is performing that reach, track, fire, and drive with her toe and knee in that power forward position and maintaining that power forward position without premature rotation of the hips and shoulders as she aggressively drives through. So if I'm standing here, you will notice that independent of my hips and shoulders, I can bring my toe and knee into power forward position. Now most young developing pitchers and their coaches believe that the problem in not being able to do that is down in the foot and ankle area, and it's not. A well-conditioned athlete, and when I say well-conditioned, we talk about this all the time, a well-conditioned athlete is one who has prepared her body to go to the next level and to perform these movements explosively and with the best chance of putting them in position to deliver the ball with maximum speed and command. So it's not my foot that's the problem, it's under development of my glutes, my hip flexors, the core and trunk area of my body that's going to stabilize that toe and knee in that position as I explode forward. So I've created a nice, a, nice, a nice glide off the pitching rubber with my drive foot remaining on the ground. That's legal and that is optimal. The closer I get to the batter, when I deliver my pitch without mechanical breakdown, the more effective I'm going to be. So when we're thinking about toe and knee forward, that movement of the toe and knee into that forward position is independent of rotation of hips and shoulders if you have prepared your body to perform that movement in an optimal fashion. I hope this has clarified things for John who asked that excellent question and I hope it has clarified things for you. If you have any questions or comments, we love to hear them. Talk to you next time.